Welcome in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ to this, our first virtual service in 2021. Tracy's not with us today. Technically, we are on annual leave and she's spending some quality time with our youngest daughter, Bethany, who is home from university. Originally, Bethany had intended to return to Guildford at the beginning of February, but because of the state that things are in, in Essex, she brought that forward to the 8th of January and now she's brought it forward even more and is returning home tomorrow on Monday. And so Tracy is spending, as I said, some quality time with her. So the poor you have with you always. Anyway, we're going to start our worship, which hopefully will be filled with the spirit of hope and optimism this week as we move into this new year by joining together in that wonderful song, How Great Thou Art.
We're going to enter into a time of prayer now. And I thought it would be good to spend some time thinking about all of the different people who have been impacted in so many different ways by the pandemic. I had an email this week from a gentleman in his 90s, a retired officer, whose wife is still mentally agile and alert, but had to go into a care home because um, she can't look after herself physically and she needs nursing care. And now he can't go and visit her. I can't even begin to imagine the stress that that must cause in a relationship, especially one where you've been together for so long. So we want to remember people like that. We also want to remember people who've lost loved ones during the pandemic and those that remain in hospital just now. It seems to me like my inbox is overflowing with requests for prayer at the moment for those who are poorly as a result of COVID-19. And then there are those who are suffering the economic consequences of the pandemic. Those among our number who are teachers and nurses and have to face the risk of infection every day just by going to work. So many people that we want to pray for. Sometimes we can't find the words to pray, but the Spirit intercedes on our behalf. Let's pray together. The full extent of the COVID crisis facing the NHS has become more apparent today. More than 50,000 new cases were reported in the past 24 hours. That's yet another record for the UK and a matter of extreme concern, according to Public Health England.
We all wanted to have a few days off over Christmas, but instead have been asked to come back to work. This time it's a wave. This time we've seen a, a massive increase. If we continue with the current rate of admissions, we are very, very close to becoming overwhelmed. So it is affecting anyone and everyone. People are just beginning to be exhausted. It's been such a long year. Let's join together in prayer. Loving Heavenly Father, we pray just now for all those people who have been negatively impacted by the terrible pandemic, which has plagued us now for nearly a year. Father, there's a great deal of uncertainty in our hearts as we go into this new year. We want to hope for a better future. We are thankful for the development of two vaccines now which have been approved for use among the population. But at the same time, Father, we are conscious of those who remain separated because of the pandemic. We think of those who are grieving just now, who are facing this year the firsts, the first birthday, the first Father or Mother's Day, the first Easter, the first anniversary. We claim for them your promise, Father, that those who mourn shall be comforted. We think of those of our number who are essential workers, not just the nurses and the teachers, although we do pray for them, but also the lorry drivers, the shelf stackers, the cleaners, the people that perhaps we don't notice on a daily basis who have to go out to work in order that we might be able to live. Father, we know that they are all known to you and we bring them to you collectively just now. And now somewhat selfishly, Father, we pray for ourselves as we worship together that you would draw us closer to your heart, to your mind, and that we would sense in our own hearts and minds that peace, that hope, that optimism that can only be found in you. Father, over this period of worship, we're going to try, assisted by your spirit, to keep our minds stayed on you. And we thank you in anticipation for the peace which we know will come over us as we worship together. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Here's to the ones that we got Cheers to the wish you were here But you're not Cause the dreams bring back All the memories Of everything we've been through Close to the ones here today Close to the ones that we lost on the way Cause the dreams bring back All the memories And the memories bring back Memories bring back you There's a time that I remember When I did not know no pain When I believed in forever Everything would stay the same Now my heart feel like December, December When somebody say your name Cause I can't reach out to call you But I know I will one day Yeah Everybody hurts sometimes Everybody, Everybody hurts someday Yeah But everything will be alright Go as your voice will say Hey Here's to the ones that we got Cheers to the wish you were here But you're not cause it's dreams Memories bring back, memories bring back 
One of the things that I dearly miss as a consequence of um, virtual worship is the testimony period. I am often blessed by those who stand up and share a few words of encouragement or an experience that they've had that week. I find that often in a meeting that's where I get the greatest blessing, listening to others telling me about their own Christian faith and practice. Well. I really do hope and pray that some of you will find the time to film yourselves testifying about how God has helped and strengthened you during the last 10 months. It would be great to hear from you, so send your links to us and we will share your testimonies online. And you don't have to be a member of our congregation in Southend, wherever you're watching, anywhere around the world, please send us your testimonies and we will build them into our worship together. But now, we can't have a testimony period, but we are going to sing some familiar choruses, some of which will take those of us who have been around the church for a long, long time back to our youth. Um, it's a chorus medley featuring some well-known choruses. Let's sing together.
Our Bible reading today is taken from the third chapter of the book of Joshua, verses 1 to 13. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went through the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have never been this way before. But keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the Ark, and do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all Israel, so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you, and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe, and as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand in a heap. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. On Boxing Day, Tracy, myself and Bethany sat down in the evening to watch the BBC version of A Christmas Carol. You may have watched this, it's, it's a very dark production. It came out last year and uh, it takes quite a few liberties with the original story, attempting to fill in some of the gaps as to why Ebenezer Scrooge turned out to be the person that he was. But as I was watching it, particularly as it came towards the conclusion of the program, something dawned on me that has never dawned on me before. Now, I have watched so many versions of A Christmas Carol over the years, from the Alistair Sims one, through the, the Muppets Christmas Carol, to perhaps my favorite, uh, the modern version, Scrooged, starring Bill Murray as an embittered TV executive. I've watched so many versions of A Christmas Carol and yet as I say something dawned on me on Boxing Day for the first time really and it was to do with the transformation that occurs in the life of Ebenezer Scrooge. Now three spirits came to visit Scrooge. The spirit of Christmas past, the spirit of Christmas present and the spirit of Christmas yet to be. Now, it's interesting to note that looking back and looking at where he was on their own were not enough to give Scrooge the motivation and power he needed to see his life transformed. He needed to have a future in which that transformed life could live out an example of hope to other people. Now it's important to look back. We need to look back because it will show us where we have come from 
and we might find clues in our past that tell us why we behave in the way we do, why we are hampered by the weaknesses that seem to follow us wherever we go. By looking back, we can understand ourselves better and have a better idea of how to be an improved person in the future. We need to look at where we are. We need to be honest with ourselves and look at our current circumstances. We can hide ourselves from everyone other than God. God sees us exactly as we are. And God only deals in the present. So it's important not only that we look back, but also that we look at where we are. Have we learned from the mistakes of the past? Have we identified the, the wrong manoeuvres that we made, the wrong paths that we took? Have we repented for the bad things we did, the selfish things we did? Have we learnt from our mistakes? But if Ebenezer Scrooge had only gone back and only been shown the present, that would have not been enough to empower the transformation that is the climax to that wonderful Christmas story. The truth is, we all need a future. We need a future, even if that future is only a few days or a few weeks. We need a future in order for God to realise in our lives that wonderful testimony of his grace that will speak to other people so much more clearly and loudly than we could ever speak with our voices alone. I thought it was interesting uh, in the verses that we shared together from Joshua chapter 3. There were several things that struck me about that reading. First of all, um, the times that the Jews found themselves in, the, the time that the Israelite nation was uh, finding themselves in was unprecedented. I don't know if you caught that in the text, but Joshua said, the way you are going, you've, you've never been this way before. He says to them, the future is unknown. You're in unprecedented times. Now, he doesn't use that much overused word, does he? Unprecedented. But he says, we've not been this way before. We don't know where we're going. We don't know the direction we're moving in. And so he instructs them to follow closely the ark of the Lord. And then they had to distance themselves. I don't know if you picked that up in the reading. Um, they had to keep a distance between themselves and the ark of the Lord. Some similarities there between their situation and ours. We all know about distancing, particularly for us, social distancing. And we also, like them, really don't know the way that we are going. And Joshua gives them this promise. Now, <laughs> he, he says to them, consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow God is going to do amazing things among you. Now, I, I love these verses. I love this this promise, the way this is structured. Because, first of all, there is a condition. God says through Joshua to the Israelite nation, consecrate yourselves. Now, consecration is a term that we don't really use very much these days. If we were living in the Salvation Army 80, 90 years ago, then we would have been hearing that word used constantly. To consecrate ourselves means to give ourselves completely to God. I always think that the best description of consecration that you can find in the pages of Scripture is that which is found in the first few verses of Romans chapter 12, where Paul says, and I'm, I'm quoting from the J.B. Phillips paraphrase because I think that's the most wonderful description that you can find, but in those verses, Paul says, with eyes wide open to the mercies of God, I beg you, brothers and sisters, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. 
Now that's a pretty good definition of consecration. That we should be so moved and so motivated and so empowered by God's love for us that our natural response is to give everything that we have to him, to place it all at his disposal for him to do what he wants with. And so Joshua says to the people, consecrate yourselves. Why? Because tomorrow God is going to do amazing things among you. Now, I, I love this term, tomorrow. It's interesting, but in times of worry and concern, times of national crisis, this word tomorrow uh, is used quite a lot. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the musical Annie. I've been privileged to see both the, the movie version and to see um, the live performance in the West End. But in that musical Annie, um, Daddy Warbucks takes his adopted daughter, orphan Annie, to um, the president. And she's told to be quiet and to sit in the corner and to say nothing. But she's eavesdropping on the conversation. And of course, Annie is set at the time of the Great Depression. And the conversation around the table is befitting of that time. It's a somewhat gloomy and pessimistic conversation. And there comes a point when she just can't keep in her own natural optimism anymore. And she decides to share her own philosophy with the president. And she turns and she starts to sing these words. The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar that tomorrow there'll be sun. Just thinking about tomorrow clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow till there's none. When I'm stuck with a day that's grey and lonely, I just stick out my chin and grin and say, the sun will come out tomorrow. During the Second World War, Vera Lynn made popular a song very similar to the one sung by Annie to the president. Uh, it was written by Irving Berlin. And again, it features that word tomorrow. It's a lovely day tomorrow. Tomorrow is a lovely day. Come and feast your tear dimmed eyes on tomorrow's clear blue skies. If today your heart is weary, if every little thing looks gray, just forget your troubles and learn to say, tomorrow is a lovely day. I love the word tomorrow. And the reason I like it so much is because it, it's so evocative in the message that it gives. It says something is going to change. It's not going to change right now. It's not going to change today, but it's not going to change in a week or a month, or a year, it's going to change tomorrow. In other words, this word tomorrow means things are not going to change straight away, but you're not going to have to wait a long time for them to change. They're going to change soon. And sometimes I think the reason that God says tomorrow is because he wants to prompt within us a desire to prepare ourselves. And I think that's what we clearly see in the Bible reading that we shared earlier. God says, consecrate yourselves for tomorrow I am going to do amazing things among you. The Jews found themselves living in unprecedented times. They were traveling towards the promised land. They knew that God had given them this hope. They didn't know how to get there. They had to follow the Ark of the Covenant, which in turn would be carried by the priests who would follow the, the cloudy pillar and the fiery pillar. And eventually they would get to the promised land. But they lived in very uncertain and difficult times. Times that were going to be made even more uncertain and difficult as a consequence of their sin. And a journey which should have been relatively short was going to end up taking them 40 years. Now, aren't there some similarities there with our own situation? Are we not in some respects having to deal with difficult and uncertain times? 
And for some of us, not for all, but for some of us, have not those times been made more difficult as a consequence of our own sin, our own selfishness? Well, the good news is that God is saying to us that if we consecrate ourselves today, then tomorrow he is going to do amazing things. One of the songs which lots of people would cite as their favourite is the song I'm in his hands. Now I have to confess that I do have a little bit of a problem with that song and I think it's the, the simplistic nature of the line that talks about the fact that the days I cannot see have all been planned for me. Now I do believe, don't get me wrong, I believe that I can trust God for my future. I believe that his way is best. I believe that his grace is enough. I believe that anything that happens to me can be used by him for my benefit, for good, because I love him and am called according to his purpose. But I struggle with this notion that every day the things I experience are part of God's ideal plan for my life. We live in a fallen world. We serve in a fallen world. And because of that, I think that sometimes things happen which are not part of God's ideal will for us. And I think at the moment we are seeing that exemplified more than ever in the presence of this wretched pandemic and the problems that it is causing us all, the, the stress and the strain, the, the real deep sense of pain that it is causing some people. And you know, I'm not over exaggerating when I say this. Some people have lost their jobs. Some people have lost their homes. Some people have lost loved ones. And I don't believe that we can, we can hold God accountable for COVID-19 and I don't believe as I have said many many times in recent months I don't believe that because we are Christians we are in some sense immune to COVID-19 but what I do believe and believe passionately passionately is that God holds the future now, of course, we do have a future, uh, and as I've said often again over the last few months, we, we do live in an eternal context. As the song reminds us, we have a hope that will surely endure after the passing of time because we have been promised a place in heaven. But I believe we have a hope that's closer to home than just our eternal destiny. I believe we have tomorrow and I believe that tomorrow can be a lovely day. I believe that tomorrow the sun can come out and I think we have to cling to this idea of tomorrow. Tomorrow God is going to do amazing things in our midst. So dear friends I leave you with this hopefully comforting thought. If things are difficult for you today and things have been difficult for you for some time now, I want to encourage you. I want to reassure you that tomorrow is another day and that tomorrow has been promised to us. Whether, as I've said, it's that eternal tomorrow for which we all eagerly wait or it's the tomorrow that unfolds when we wake up in the morning. We have this gift of tomorrow. Our responsibility is not to worry about the future as we reminded ourselves last week. Our responsibility is to consecrate ourselves, to make ourselves aware, to remind ourselves of the wonderful love of God a love that we can trust, a love that can sustain us, a love from which we can never be separated. And in response to that love, to offer ourselves completely to God, recognising 
that although the future is uncertain, we are very much in his hands. Amen, and God bless you. Darkened clouds may gather round me I trust the one who whispers peace Although the winds and waves Would threaten to confound me He walked upon the ancient seas He still can calm the storm in me I cannot see in the night that lies before me But I hold the hand that made the stars My faith is firm in the one who watches over me His steadfast love will be my guard He will forever hold my heart I'm in His hands I'm in His hands Whatever the future holds I'm in His hands The days I cannot see Have all been planned for me His way is best you see I'm in his hands gone by you have always been my portion when I have yielded to your love so here I stand alive in you and available for you to use me take all my life for your glory Jesus Christ I'm in your hands I'm in your hands Whatever the future holds I'm in your hands The days I cannot see Have all been planned for me Your way I know I'm in
Well, thank you for joining with us today. I really do hope and pray that you have been strengthened and encouraged as we've worshipped together. And in spite of the difficulties that face us in the coming year, that you will move into 2021 with a degree of confidence, not just because spring is coming and the vaccine is being rolled out, but because the Lord your God has gone before you. Amen. Now we're going to sing our closing song together. Shine, Jesus shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Hallelujah. Thank you. 